the null hypothesis is a statement, uh, and the statement of the null hypothesis is that the population correlation coefficient is equal to zero. Okay. Uh, but what we can actually do is we can hypothesize with respect to the correlate the population correlation coefficient to be any value, in which case this particular statistic here allows us to do the calculation. And once again, like all our statistics, you can see that the numerator uh, is the difference between the sample evidence, the sample correlation coefficient, and the population or the hypothesized population value, which is defined in our null hypothesis. So R minus rho, in this case here, is calculating how far our sample evidence is away from our hypothesized uh, value of our population correlation coefficient. Now it just happens that in this case our, our, our hypothesized value is zero, so rho becomes zero, and this formula then naturally becomes this formula on the right hand side. So we need to calculate our test statistic. Uh, we know what R is, R is 0 0.94, so our test statistic is T is equal to 0 0.94 minus the value of the population uh, correlation coefficient under the null hypothesis, so it's minus 0, divided by 1 minus R squared, so it's 1 minus 0 0.94 to be squared, divided by N minus 2, N is the number of paired observations that we have, N is equal to 6, so N minus 2 is going to be 6 minus 2, and it's the square root of that particular value here, okay? So this gives us uh, 0 0.94 divided by, I'm just going to grab the calculator and do this calculation here. So it's the square root, and I'm going to put what's inside the square root in brackets, it's the square root of 1 minus uh, 0 0.94 squared, okay, and that needs to be divided by, well that needs to be divided by 4, okay, which gives us a value of 0, 0 0.17 approximately. So our test statistic t uh, is equal to, well it's equal to 0.94 divided by 0.17, okay, which gives us a value of 5.53, approximately. <clears throat> so what we're saying is this, in standard units terms, our observed, I suppose our experimental results, yeah, of 0 0.94 for the sample correlation coefficient, in standard units terms, uh, that is 5.53 standard units away from our hypothesized uh, value of our population correlation coefficient. Okay, so we're nearly done now. Uh, the next uh, stage in this particular process is that we need to calculate, we need to calculate the critical values for T distribution. So step four is our critical our critical values, okay? Uh, let's just keep in mind that this is being modeled by a T distribution. So it's a T distribution, okay, centered on zero. It's a two-tail test. So we have a left tail and a right tail. We have alpha over two in the left tail, alpha over two in the right tail, which is 0 0.025. This is 0 0.025. Zero two five, and the question that we have is: What are the critical values that have zero point zero two five of the area to the right of them, and zero point zero two five to the left? And to find that, we go to our t distribution tables. Okay, so our t distribution tables. Okay, we will look for uh, the area in the right hand tail is going to be zero point zero two five, and our degrees of freedom. Well, our degrees of freedom are defined to be the sample size minus 1, so it's n minus 1, which is 6 minus 1, gives us 5. We triangulate in, and this is our respective uh, critical value. Okay, so I'm going to go to our t-distribution tables. Our t-distribution tables uh, with an area of 0 0.025 in the right-hand tail, and with 5 degrees of freedom, the critical value is 2.57 one okay so this is 2.571 okay so this critical value here is 2.571 so if we look at this in a little bit more detail what we're saying is that this value here is 2.571 and this value over here is minus 
and we're saying that anything falls that falls into a tail area uh, has a probability at most 0 0.025 uh, if the null hypothesis is true. In other words, it has a very, very small probability of occurring if the null hypothesis is true, which means that it would have a very, very high probability of occurring if the null hypothesis was actually incorrect and the alternative was true. Okay, so we can see that our t statistic is 5.53. So our t statistic falls into this tail here. t is equal to 5.53. So it falls into the rejection region. So we know to reject. So our decision, step five, our decision is, well, clearly, clearly our t value is bigger than our critical value. It's a two-tailed test, so let's just say the absolute value over t value is bigger than our critical value, absolute value over critical value, and what we mean by that is 5.53 is bigger than 2.571, and as such, as such, we reject h0 in favour, in favour of ha at the 5% significance level significance level okay uh, and so it's really what we're saying now is that we have an inference we infer okay that the population correlation coefficient is not zero okay and is different to zero so we're rejecting the null hypothesis okay <coughs> I suppose in real terms what we're saying is that the evidence that we've captured okay that the evidence that we've captured Okay, and the correlation coefficient that we've calculated from it, 0 0.94, that that's sufficient evidence to suggest that the true population correlation coefficient is not zero, and in fact is different to zero. Okay guys, uh, once again, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland, uh, and I hope this video uh, was helpful. Thank you.